Let's get Acts chapter 3. Amen. Praise God. And you know, it's always a good thing to get these books, historical facts that happen. See the, see the photographs of those men. See the hair and the, oh, down hair and the way they're dressed. Way, way, way back. Those men were on fire for God. And they had no mod cons like we have today. See that? Praise the Lord. Buy it and read it. Amen. Hallelujah. Get the knowledge in. Let's get Peter and John. Now these two characters were everywhere. You know, I remember years ago in Sligo, some of us Christians, when the church was young there and all, some of us Christians, we used to go out to, to woods, Hazelwood and places like that, beside the lake. And we'd be discussing all sorts of things about the Bible and salvation and all sorts of stories in the Bible. All day long we talk about these things, just like Peter and John. And it was a wonderful way of building each other up. And praying, but walking along the road, we'd be praying, and maybe be, maybe sometimes there'd be ten of us talking about the Lord. Some boys just recently converted to Christ. You know, knew very little about the Bible or anything, but we're talking and walking and praising God on a new newfound Savior. It was a wonderful thing. We need to get all get back to that again. Let's read this here now, chapter three. Now Peter and John went up together. See it? Together. Something about twos. Encouraging each other. No doubt talking about the Lord. We're going to a service in the temple. At the hour of prayer. The ninth hour. Now sometimes when we go along the road talking or whatever we are. Things happen unexpectedly. And we need to be ready as Christians. These two men were ready. I believe they were spirit filled. They were already being prayed. They were in company with other Christians. They were just all for Christ. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for arms and fixing his eyes on him with John Peter said look at us now I believe Peter was moving in the gift of the spirit here word of knowledge perhaps I've seen that working many times praise God and it works hallelujah when the, when the Holy Spirit's behind it it works Lord in Kaluri, I told you a few times, a woman got new lungs one night. Brand new lungs. Pre the preacher just stopped and said, there's somebody here with pain, pains in the lungs and chest. God's healed you. He didn't say God's going to heal you. He said, God's already healed you. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. And her daughter went around telling everybody, hundreds of people, two new lungs on the spot, just like that. Quickly as this what we're reading here. See? And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look on us. Now why did Peter say that? He must have seen something in this man. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you, oh I love this, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He never walked in his life. This was a miracle. Oh, how did Peter do that? That takes some doing. You know, a man sitting on the ground, never walked in his life. What position he was in, it was hard to tell, but phew, his legs must have been all twisted and bound up. And, what sort of faith did Peter have? What sort of power did that man have? Hey, on the spot. On the spot. I was up at the diamond yesterday. So you'd be ready for anything. Two Jehovah's Witnesses were up there from England. Nice, awful nice people. 
I went over and had a wee chat with them and we're talking about this, that, and the other. And I said, what, what tracks do you give out? I showed them the tracks, Jesus is coming soon. They believe, of course, he came in 1914. See? And I told them from Zechariah, when Jesus comes back again, he's going to go to the Mount of Olives. And it's going to, there's going to be an earthquake. And that's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, so they never said anything. They didn't have the scriptures to back it up. So he said to me, your poster up there, he said. I don't have a look at it. I've got a big list of revival dates. And he came up, he, he was interested in the one about John Wesley and the revival in England. And he, he took the date down and all that, you know. Oh, witness, don't you really do that. I was telling him what happened and how the power of God fell and that was in the paper tent and all the Lord were born again in the spirit of God. We got the gospel, you know. And he was delighted. He went away in good friends. Now, I don't know what happened there, but maybe that man is seeking with his wife. He's seeking the Lord. I so just pray about lift it at that. But praise God. You see, you never know what's going to happen. Be ready. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Fill with the power of God. We don't know what's going to happen. Peter and, and, and Paul did not persuade this man. They didn't argue about him. Or anything like that. They didn't try to convince him. Peter and John. They didn't try to convince him. It happened. By faith. Word of knowledge, gift of the Spirit. It happened. No argument. I love, I love that. I love that. You and I don't have to per persuade or try and convince people when the Holy Spirit is moving. They'll get saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. Or whatever. Oh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thought, isn't it? Uh, I've lost my place. <laughs> yes. um, six. Yeah, I've run it off. So he gave them his attention, expected to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Took him by the right hand and lifted him up. See the, see the confidence Peter had in Jesus there. See it? Amen. That's the confidence we should have in our Savior. Real confidence. And immediately, didn't go away and say, well, Three days you'll be healed, or something like that. Nothing like that. Immediately, immediately on the spot. His feet and ankle bones receive strength. That's a medical term. Luke wrote this, remember. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. It's not tremendous. It's not absolutely fantastic, isn't it? But I'd love to be there to see that. <coughs> Praise the Lord. See what faith can do and the power of God. Our Savior is like that today. He never changes. Always the same. Hebrews 13, 30. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. Isn't that something wonderful to, to realize that? We don't have to go back. He's like that today. In this modern world, we're talking about a Savior who grew up where there was no mod cons, no electricity, no helicopters, no airplanes, no hospitals, no this, no that, no the other. But what a, what a message he had to the world. That's right. And he's still the same today. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a trip sitting here. You don't know what's Amen. going to happen. Amen. You might even get out of this place today. Amen. Ooh. Amen. That's got, your, got your sleeping bags. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You don't know. When God's on the move, you don't know. This is outstanding so. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to them. Now there's a big long sermon here and all this. But I just want to go down to verse 19. Peter preaches the gospel to all the people around. Some got saved, some didn't. Now listen to it here. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Now here's the word I want to dwell on. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he, he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. Whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration. Of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world 
began. But that word, the times of refreshing, may come from the presence of the Lord. You know, people go out of their ways today to be refreshed. I was looking at a, a thing there last week, a place where all the, the, the rich people go to have the refreshments in times of refreshing. Way out far in all the lovely seas and mind you all the millionaires and billionaires go to this place where it will be thousands of dollars for a, a night. You know, just to sleep in a hotel. I have to pay thousands of dollars just to go and sleep. I can go and sleep in the chair for nothing. <laughs> doesn't make sense, does it? Praise God. But they go to these places for refreshment. People go on the holidays for times of refreshing. But you know, Peter reminds us here. See? Let's read it again. Oh, Peter, Peter is tremendous here. Listen. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, we want the same today. We're here this morning for a time of refreshing. In what way God's going to do, we don't know. But we certainly need it. That's why revival comes. It's a time of refreshing from the Lord. And we'll just go over, we we'll skip over chapter 4. We'll go over to chapter 4 and we get verse 29. And we see what happens when God's love, when God's bonus comes down. God's power comes down. Now they've been through times, they've been set upon by the Jewish people and all the rest of it. Now we're just coming down to 29. We see what happens when the prayer goes up and the belief goes up. Right? These men were not afraid. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak the word. Now, listen to it. Listen to this for a wonderful speech. By stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. There's nothing backward there. No prosperity there. These men were tough. Sometimes they had no place to sleep or nothing to eat. Maybe a few dates or something like that. Or figs. These were tough, but they knew their God. And they knew their Saviour. And that's the way we ought to know them. They've been through a tough time, but they were not perturbed in any way. Are we perturbed? Yep. We have tough times too. People in here have tough times. But hold on! Alan reminded us this morning, hold on. Yes. Sing that chorus, hold on a little longer. Hold on a little stronger. He's coming. Yes. Praise God. Yes. He's coming back. Yes, he is. But before that, we want the times of refreshing. This morning we want a time of refreshing. That's what we're here for. Peter, Peter knew his stuff, right? Now listen to it. And when they had prayed, now listen to this, this is tremendous stuff. This happened and they all happened the revivals over the highlands of Scotland. Mm -hmm. The same thing. I read it out here a couple of times. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken. Here's the refreshing time of the Lord now. Praise God. Listen to it. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God. <coughs> with boldness. Not tremendous. Sweet, sweet. That's what happens when the time of refreshing comes. Expect it. Don't expect anything less. Expect it. Expect it. Expect it. We have the same Savior, same powerful God. We can look forward to what God's going to do if we do the right things. Peter and John did the right thing. They prayed. They went to the meeting and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Let's read on. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart, one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. You see that? No falling out, no arguing over doctrines. No arguing over Calvinism. Amen. And Arminianism and all this carry on that goes on today. God has no, no time for that nonsense. He wants to do his stuff like he's always done it. Praise God. And he'd do it tonight or this morning. Hallelujah. I mixed up a night and morning. Hallelujah. 
I'm getting carried away into the stars. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now listen to it. Now listen to this. Verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness of the resurrection. You notice, Jesus was alive and he's still alive. He's not dead. He's not in the grave. He's still alive. We should be doing the same. No different. Listen to it. They gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. See that? And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection. Sometimes you, you, you wonder if Jesus was there at all. I tell you, he's resurrected. His power is the same. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. His power is the same. He saves and he heals and he fills with the Holy Ghost and he does all the things that he said he's going to do. And Peter and John came back today and went around some of the fellowships. I wonder what they think. I wonder, I wonder that. No, but we need this times of refreshing from the Lord. I love the way he puts this. Times of refreshing from the Lord. And he wasn't afraid to say it. With all boldness. Lord, I want to speak the word of God without fear. With all boldness. And he wasn't afraid to say it. That's <coughs> signs and wonders. Sometimes people get the blame for, for things. They're called the signs and wonders people. Well, there might be false signs and wonders too, but there's real ones also. Hallelujah. Praise God, because Jesus is real. His word, his ministry is just the same as it was. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hang on to this. Hang on to it. This is real stuff from the scriptures. It goes on to say, and great grace was upon them all. See that? The grace of God. Nor was there any among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought their proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. Now, chapter 5. Now, I'm always saying, people, be very, very careful what people say. You know, I've spoken to people about signs and wonders, especially if they're coming from God. And especially if we're in revival. I've heard people talking, saying silly things about revival and all this. And so I've heard people saying, ah, that fire business from, from God is a lot of nonsense. Be very careful in saying these sort of things. Who's ever listening to this? About ridiculing anything that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's a very dangerous ground to be standing on. Especially in revival times. We just read here what happens. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira's wife sold a possession. See, it went on in those days, not just these days, but this, those days as well. He took and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Now here's the word of knowledge, here's the gift of the Spirit. Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and kept back part of the price of the land for yourself? Have you notice they were Christians, but Satan was still able to get in. I, I heard a debate the other night, can Satan take over Christians? Well, there was an example there of it. They weren't possessed, but Satan put the thought into them. Really? That's the thing, Satan put the thought into them. And Peter knew it. They tried to hide it and they couldn't do it. Let's read it again. Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the pride of the land for yourself? Why it remained? Was it not your own? After it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived the same in your heart? You have not lied to men but to God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down, breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. You see, we've got to be very, very careful when God is moving and move along with him. See, and both of them, husband and wife, were taken right out because they were coming up against 
the move of the Holy Spirit, you see, that they did all the wrong thing, the things they shouldn't have done. And people do that today, be very careful, saying things against revival, or against signs and wonders, or anything else. Be very, very careful. Be very careful. Now I'm going to read a couple of wee things. I just want to put people right here. This book here is reality. It's God's word, and it's not to be ridiculed in any way. Or I've heard people cracking jokes about it at all. As a matter of fact, I think I was watching a bit of the news last week, and there was some comedian that showed this on the, on the television. And he was cracking jokes about, about God. Did, did anybody see this? Somebody they showed it on the news. And he was cracking his joke, and all of a sudden, she was on the ground, banging her head on the ground, lying down like this. And uh, got up. And I said in the, in the paper the next day, well, cracking jokes about God. And some people have done that to their cost. They're making fun. You just don't do that. And she collapsed on the floor. And she, she didn't know what to say. She, she couldn't talk or anything. And afterwards they were talking to her. I don't know, I just fainted. She said, I fell down. Because I was frightened to see it, you know. And I was thinking about Ananias and Sapphira. Be very careful. Cracking jokes like that. And you often hear the, the comedian doing this sort of thing, you know. And I tell you, we're in, in, in a real world, a real world. Now let's just read some of this wonderful stuff here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Are you ready, Baptist? <laughs> Speak out the truth. Jesus says, preach the truth. And all the truth and nothing but the truth. Hallelujah. I've just got a, a couple of pages here now. I'd like to get verse, uh, I'll get to chapter um, page 71. It won't take long to do this. I won't keep you here all night. Maybe three hours. So I, this is real. This is what really happened. Now remember, these people, these people were Baptists. Right? And Justin Peters, if you're listening to this one, <coughs> Hope this will change your attitude. And get your facts right the next time before you start decrying charismatic and Pentecostal churches. Get your facts right. Hallelujah. 1842. I suppose you have heard what has occurred at the other end of the island. They had the sacrament last week, and I hear that between 12,000 and 15,000 attended. And that hundreds fell down as if they were dead. Where do we have a communion service of 12,000? That's when God moved. And that's a little island, the Isle of Lewis, off the coast of Scotland. Praise the Lord, that's something. Hundreds fell down as if they were dead. Uh, 1842. And some of the Baptist churches had congregations in, in those days of four and five hundred on the island. Read the history. Read the history. Praise the Lord. It's not tremendous, isn't it? It fell down. Uh, those affected were mostly women and children. See? Falling down on the ground. Now listen to what it says here. They were baptizing a lot of people. The crying and fadings are dying away in most places. But the desire to hear is the same. The revival has extended to the mainland. In some parishes it is at its height and the people are carried home in carts. Today they'd be carried home in cars and taxis. They were piled up in carts. They couldn't walk. The power of God was so powerful. They were carried home in carts. Where do you see that today? That's what you call real revival. Just like Peter and John. Prayed that signs and wonders may be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray for revival. Yes. That's what we need. Amen. Maybe we'll get the 12,000 coming to the, the breaking of bread. Can you imagine all the, the bottles of <laughs> Where we get all the bottles of the bread? The many loads that we need for that. Can you imagine 
All the girls going out for more laws, ten down for laws. Get more quick, get more laws, get more laws. You never keep up with us. You never keep up with us. Uh, it says here, the pastor of the Ewig Baptist Church, he died. His brother Duncan Ferguson took over. Right? Those contortions and screamings which have been so frequent one evening while preaching, he was obliged to conclude being unable to hear his own voice. Oh, do you hear that? And that's, they were Baptist churches. Let's have a look at this one here. Oh, it's great here. Isn't it really decent? says here, what an ordinary congregation would hear with composure affected them so that many trembled, others wept aloud, and some fainted. It was altogether a striking scene. Where would you hear that in any other church? It's going to happen, it'll happen this one. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but you see, you have to put in for these things. Silver and gold have I no more, such as I have. I give unto you, in the name of Jesus Christ, send revival, send revival. I want to be here all night with this. Oh, oh page 89, let's have a look here. Oh, I love reading this. Are you affected? Are you, does this affect you? Should be all on the floor now, by now. Donald McKinnon, a teacher in the Gaelic school, had been established in June 1842, was present on that occasion and later wrote, I may say the awe of God fell upon us all. This is the Baptist church. That same evening during the service, three were more women cried aloud for mercy. And during the service, the following Sunday, the cries from the meeting house could be distinctly heard at the distance of half a mile. You could hear the people crying out for half a mile. Can you imagine if the Holy Spirit fell here tonight in the town of Inniskillen, you'd hear the cries, hallelujah, Amen. praising God. Amen. That's how good it was. That's how powerful it was. Yes. And that's the Baptist church. Don't be telling me about charismatics being off their heads. <laughs> that was worse. I would have been complaining about that one. Praise the Lord. Pentecost is Pentecost. Revival is revival. Yes. Now go out and buy the book. Sky Revivals and read it yourself. Yeah. And Mr. Justin, make sure you read it. I want to hear you on the YouTube. Apologizing. Hallelujah. <laughs> the whole congregation was moved. The house was a place of weeping. As if the promise was literally fulfilled. They should look upon me whom they have pierced and mourn. It was an outburst of the whole, so that no mouth was silent, and no eye dry. Old and young mourned together, and the blooming and withered cheeks were all wet with tears. The scene was indescribable, and I sat down to weep. See it? What sort of a scene was that? Crying out to God for mercy. Oh, man, I'd love to be there. That's when real revival hits. That's what we need. That's what we need today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Page 21. Let me see this one here. I've got about a thousand of these. I hope you brought your lunches, have you? Praise God. Listen to this. The manner in which many of them, the converts, were impressed was to be at first surprising. They were suddenly struck down during the time of prayer. They fell to the ground. And many of them, both young and old, continued speechless for 20 minutes or half an hour. See it? They all flocked together and continued to go from house to house, praying and praising God for eight or ten days and nights, with only two hours sleep each morning. And many of them were several nights without any sleep. They were so much praising God, Amen. busily employed, conversing and comforting those who were impressed. That was the new converts. It was at meetings for social prayer that most considerable awakenings took place. April 1802. At one of them, at Cartelham, a most extraordinary influence was felt. Fourteen persons fell down to the ground, crying for mercy. They were Baptists. 
Worthy business was wholly neglected, and the whole night spent in prayer, exhorting one another. Divine power accompanied the ministry of the pastor. There was an awakening all around the lock. News of the revival spread through the glens and villages like wildfire. Nothing like this had ever been seen in Breedlebane before. And nothing like that has ever been seen here either. The last great revival was in the Isle of Lewis. Around 1950, 40s, 30s. Powerful move of God. And these are the things we should be praying for. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just reminding us, that's all. What can happen if we do the right thing? A sign, or a prayer. Lord, a sign and wonder may be done in the name of the Holy Child, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the meeting this morning, Lord. It's all been spirit-filled, Lord. Spirit-led. Thank you, Jesus. What are we missing out on, Lord? Praise the Lord. We say you will send the signs and wonders, Lord, that we need today. We're not just looking for them, we're looking for the sign of, of Jesus, the Holy Spirit to come, and the rest is up to him. Praise God. But send revival at all costs, Lord, whatever, even without the signs and the wonders. Send revival, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let the blessings flow, even from this morning, Lord. Let us go home and think and ponder on these things, Lord. Because you're a wonderful Savior, Lord, mighty God. And you fulfill your promises, Lord. You want to bless and you want to heal. You want to be with us and your people. You love your people, Lord. Pray for this little fellowship will be revived and the power of God will sweep in, Lord. And our breaking of bread service. People won't be able to fit in the place. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, this is what we want to see, Lord. Yes, Lord. And it happened in the 1800s, yes. Lord. Oh, happened in the 1900s as well, Lord. The same thing for years. Praise God. You can do it again, Lord. Fill that spirit of revival, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. We ask, Lord. Bless us now, wherever we go, Lord. Bring healing and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. And that the tongues of fire might fall like on, again on us, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your wonderful name. Thank hallelujah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep hallelujah. looking up. Yes, hallelujah. Keep looking up. Hallelujah.